so this was on the end of my last video but I know a lot of people <coughs> give up early doors <laughs> where's your staying power guys um because they assume uh, the thing is you can't write in the title everything you're going to be putting in your video because the title will be too long um so often my videos have other bits in them and I did allude to it in the beginning of the video I alluded to this case which well, wasn't just this case it was also the case of the 1996 um, homicide of Catalina Palomino of um, Houston, in Houston, Texas, and it was a stabbing. Also, she was stabbed multiple times. Also, so were both of these people. Um, Agnes was stabbed. 12 times and she had well they both had seven cut wounds sorry Agnes had 15 stab wounds and Lloyd Courtney these two people you see here he had 12 stab wounds and they both had blunt force trauma multiple blunt force trauma injuries um, however so it's this thing with the blood seeping out of the building that people thinking somebody said something about the amount of blood in your body but <sighs> people don't usually lose all the blood out of their body because they go into hypervolemic shock or hemorrhage hemorrhagic shock and their heart stops beating and they no longer are pumping blood out um, so um, there's only a, a certain percentage that people lose and it also doesn't just go down it would spread out and if you look at the building at the floor so I don't know if they knew exactly how that bed was positioned here whether they knew that or whether it could have been so people are thinking I guess that Zana was at the end of the 13.4 foot arrow which if she wasn't on the bed and I don't think that we can be very confident of where anybody was, to be honest. I mean, apart from which rooms that they were in. And I don't think we can be sure about where, which rooms or even which houses um, Dylan and Bethany were in. Um, but the floor, let's have a look at what the floor is made out of. So it's like a laminate. And in a second, you can see when Kaylee comes from one room into another. And this is so common in student accommodation um, where they just put the same floor throughout I mean you can see it's different as they go up the stairs but on the same level
Look at the floor again when Kaylee comes out that room. And I, I mean, it, look, it looks quite fairly nice floor as well. I just think that blood would have just spread. I mean, maybe some might have got through that, not onto the outside wall though. I think people need to get, be a bit realistic. So I want to show you this video so that you can see Can you, so that you can see what a real crime scene looks like because they've painted the picture of a of a horror film basically and it, and it would be pretty it would be horrific to see no doubt but probably not as horrific as we've got in, as what we've got in our minds This is the other lady that was killed, right? And um, that's the girl who was 15 years old and is still in prison now, who basically, she just got completely screwed over. It's really sad and just, there's just not enough evidence to convict. It's, it, it, Oh my God, there's so much with that case. But that's what what I was going to say is that um, the first person to look at her didn't even realise, they didn't realise that she'd been stabbed. They hadn't worked out that she'd been stabbed. I mean, you, you wouldn't believe that. You know, when, when people have said, oh, there's an unconscious person, or how would they not notice... I actually think it's not that... I was just reading something this afternoon and it said that when people are dressed, sometimes people can't tell that people have been stabbed. And that was the case with this woman. It wasn't until they opened her... her she got a nightdress on. It wasn't until they opened her nightdress that they realised that she'd actually been stabbed. It, it's not like we think it is. And I thought exactly like most people are thinking... I thought exactly what you have, or not exactly, obviously, but the sort of thing that you have in your minds until I saw actual crime scenes and I got more of a realistic idea, which is why I, that's why I'm doing this, just so that people can get more, because they're praying, they... They can use this, the authorities, they use the fact that people are into true crime, they use the fact that people love, um, people are intrigued by or in horror films and things like that. They, they're using it because they know that we don't know the reality. And the reality is, is a, it's an awful, awful way to go, but it might not appear as we imagine that it would appear inside that house. I feel like I've laboured laboured the point a bit now. Is anybody else anybody still here? <laughs> um sorry. So anyway, um just uh listen to this report and then click on the link which is will be in both the description and pinned in the comments. And have a look, by comparison, what's said in the video, sorry, in the report, and what you see in the video by comparison. Um, Lloyd Courtney lying on his back on the dining room floor with what appears to be blood on his head, upper body, arms and legs, there was a large amount of what appeared to be blood on the floor, wall, cabinet and table in and around the dining area. Now look at that floor, wall, cabinet and table and tell, you, tell me if you think that's a large amount of blood. 
Because I think when Kathy Mabbott said there was a lot of blood, we're picturing like something out of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or something. And I think her idea of a lot of blood and our idea of a lot of blood, having probably only experience that we have of a lot of blood being horror films, I think they might be two different things. Or I think Kathy Mabbott's never seen that crime scene. <laughs> because she was so, so awkward. And um, I have actually produced a video which shows, yeah, I'm one of those people, um, that uh, they don't like doing autopsies. I, don't, I mean, I know they couldn't have got away without doing an autopsy. They don't like having coroners go to... to um, they like the police to handle it all, basically. They don't like coroners going to um, suspicious deaths and they don't like to do too many autopsies. We know that Spokane does the autopsies but they don't seem to send much work to Spokane. You'd need to look at a video that's in my uh, library to uh, find out more about that. But I mean you would think in this case I just don't know if somebody else went and she's just the spokesperson, to be honest, because she just was floundering. I don't know if it's because she wasn't sure how much she could say or if she's just making it up as she goes along. I really don't know. Or maybe she's never been in the spotlight like that before. But there was something very odd about her um, delivery. Um, so, yeah, if you see how much blood is actually in the places that they're describing there being a lot of blood I think you probably think mm, is that really a lot of blood um detective hardy also observed broken pieces of a frying pan on the floor near there was a large amount of what appeared to be blood on agnes courtney's head upper body arms and socks now I don't know about that because that bit's blurred out but this bit, there was also a large amount of what appeared to be blood on the bed wall, sorry, floor, wall, walls, door, dresser and mirrors. Now you have a look at the bed, floor, walls, door, dresser and mirrors and tell me if there's a lot of blood there. Because I just don't know if they're like, if it's because they've seen the scene and it, and it hit them in the face because it seemed so powerful that it felt like a lot. Or if they're just exaggerating so that it's more shocking for the conviction. I don't know. But this report and that video do not match up.